In this fourth section, I will cover the underlying dynamics of confidence and fear so that you can build a framework for understanding how to create a carefree state of mind when you trade. I've got a technical methodology that gives me winning trades, let's say, 65% of the time. I don't know which of those of the next 20 trades or 25 trades that come up, I don't know which ones are going to be the winners and which ones are going to be the losers. If I'm going to trade my methodology appropriately, it really obligates me to take every single trade. I can't be picking and choosing my trades based on what I think is going to happen because I hopefully have already established you don't know. Mark is reinforcing the idea of not knowing which trades will work. Accepting this reduces our fear about the trade because we have to accept that it's out of our control. We have to take comfort in a wider perspective of knowing that over 100 trades, 60 or whatever percent of them will work. We can't choose which setups to take. We have to take all of them and let the math work for us. If you think you know, you're just making it up. We don't know if the trade is going to work, and we don't know why price action is doing what it is. Mark stated in the last video that unless you're actually talking to the traders, the dynamic traders that are making price move, there's no way of actually predicting and knowing what price action will do. And we can use that realization to remove the emotional attachment to each trade. Now, if it turns out that your methodology has diminished in its capacity to produce a winning percentage because the underlying nature of the market is changing in relationship to this fixed formula, then, you know, that's why you trade in smaller sample sizes or a sample size where you don't lose an inordinate amount of money to find out it's not working. That's one of the big problems with indicator-based technical analysis algorithms in trading. This video goes over that in depth. Fear has an, has an effect on the way we perceive information. When we're in a state of mind of fear, we are perceiving information in a threatening way. The up and down ticks that the market offers us are not inherently pleasurable or painful by their nature. The interpretations come from our beliefs. Once we learn how to manage our interpretations, we can manage the way that we feel. I love what Mark says here. The whole tapping into our mind's pain or the accumulation of negative events is not really empirical, but the idea of fear affecting our interpretations is spot on. In the woods at night, you're on edge and you hear a stick crack next to you. You might think, bear! In the woods during the day, you watch a squirrel jump off a tree and crack a stick on the ground. You go, ha, squirrel, and carry on smiling. Fear affects the way we think. Thinking affects our emotions. Emotions affect our behaviors. This is the cognitive triangle, which is all about how our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors all affect each other, can cause each other, and so on and so forth. You guys with me on this? What Mark has been talking about, well, sort of. He has his own version of it, but what this has been about is cognitive dissonance. And its relation to trading is about how it's hard to admit when we're wrong on a trade because it goes against a certain belief about ourself. You know, maybe we think we're smart, and to lose on a trade, being wrong, means we're dumb. And those two things can't coexist in our brains at the same time. But I already made a video on that, and you can click on it in the top right. You can't deny the fact that if I'm, if I'm feeling fearful right now, then I'm, then I'm feeling fearful. That's just the way that it is. I'm in that state of mind. Most traders have to go through the process. Remember this morning, the thread, that, the common thread between all traders who end up, you know, being, uh, you know, being really successful is that they end up having to lose one or more fortunes of what they defined as a fortune to get to that point. It's because the process of losing caused them to change the way that they think about trading. Losing 10% of my net worth back in early 2021 certainly had a very large impact on the way I thought about trading. And it was extremely painful, but it was the most beneficial experience for me. If the desire is there, you'll find a way to facilitate the change. Yes! And that's the big one. I don't need to know what's going to happen next to make money. Start monitoring your thoughts, your words, or your actions to see that they're consistent with what it is that you want to accomplish. And then simply purposefully refocus when you find out that you're doing, saying, doing, or thinking something that's opposite or not, not consistent with what you desire. And just constantly refocus. 
eventually it'll get to the point where you are that person. Math formulas or price patterns don't know the intentions, objectives, or reasons why the individual traders who are capable of moving prices behave the way they do. As a result, you will almost never know the real reason why any particular trade worked or not. What he just said is one of my personal biggest takeaways from this entire workshop. For me, it kind of removes some of the pressure. It seems like some people spend hours and hours analyzing the charts on all time frames with different candles, different indicators, and moving averages to break down every tiny detail in the market to see what might happen next. And we can do that, and that's good, because we can use that to familiarize ourselves with price action. But every type of analysis that we do means nothing, because we don't know why the price moved. We can look at how it moved, but we don't know why it did. And we don't need to know that why in order to make money. So for me, it kind of takes some of that pressure off. I hope it does for you too. What I'm saying to you is that when you get a signal from your methodology, stop thinking. <laughs> There's nothing to think about. The pitfalls of a trade by trade perspective. Anything you do for any reason can result in a winning trade. The problem is many of the things that you could do that result in a winning trade could reinforce trading behaviors that could lead to a catastrophic loss. The bad behaviors he's referring to is not predefining your risk before a trade. Because if we don't do that, then we'll obviously just keep justifying staying in the position longer and longer and moving that mental stop loss. Our minds are literally wired to connect the two. Disconnect this now moment from what happened the last time. Because there is no connection. The reality is there's no connection. That's the truth. You just can't let your mind think that there is a connection. Don't let yourself think that there's any connection between now and what happened the last time. Because the reality is there is none. There really isn't. I don't care how identical it looks. Check out this video on illusory correlation where we make connections that don't exist in the top right. So I'm saying that if you make up your mind to trade for a new reason, the reason is the acquisition of skills as opposed to the outcome or how much money you're making, you will acquire those skills and then you'll find that the outcomes just take care of themselves. Brilliant. When you can execute one share flawlessly over a sample size or one or two sample sizes, then go to 10 shares and see how you do. And if you can't do 10 shares comfortably and flawlessly, go back to five. You're just building skills. If you, stay, if, if you get your mind out of, out, of the, out, of, out of the money, out of the outcome part, and focus on building the skills, once those skills are there, you're going to make all the money you want. Yeah. The most successful traders love the process of trading, whereas a typical trader usually ignores the process because he's obsessively focused on the outcome. Okay, resolve to commit the five fundamental truths about the nature of trading as core beliefs of your trading personality. Those five fundamental truths are anything can happen. Is that true or not? Yes, yes Mr. Douglas. Every moment is unique. Is that true? Yes. Okay. An edge is nothing more than an indication of a higher probability of one thing happening over another? Okay. Yes. Is there a random distribution between wins and losses on any given set of variables that define an edge? Yes, yes. absolutely. Do we need to know what's going to happen next to produce a consistent income? No. No. Focus on the process of acquiring the skills to be a good trader and not on how much money you make. All right, that's the end of this workshop. Thank you for watching, and of course, there will be many more of these in the future. Bye-bye.